G'day guys, Will here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to this monster PC build. So it's been a good number of weeks now since we uh, did any content on this build, but it has been going on in the background as you can see and it's just about all finished now. But I wanted to bring you back up to speed in today's video, sort of fill you in on the rest of the build from where we left off last time. So the previous video, which I'll link above my head for you right now, we got as far as installing the radiators, the basic layout, uh, getting the motherboard populated and installed into the case. Uh, but we hadn't done anything else yet. Now there was a couple other little bits and pieces that we moved around as well. So we're going to keep the video relatively short and sweet for you guys today. I'll run you through the rest of the build in a sort of time lapse fashion like what we did with the first one. We have done a lot of videos in the past where we covered all the intricacies of PC building in greater detail. So I'll put some links in the description below for those and if there are any specific questions that you guys have relating to this particular build, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to put together some more videos later on talking about those. So we'll hit the montage now, show you it all going together, then I'll come back at the end and just run you through a couple of little details, a couple of little things to be aware of with the Lian Lee V3000 case as well. So let's hit the montage.
All right, guys, so that is how the build all came together. And I mean, there was hours and hours and hours of building in there, measuring things, drilling things, cutting things, and uh, you know, I really love doing that stuff. But there's certainly a lot of detail that goes into building something like this. And so there are a couple of little things that we changed since the initial build video that we did a few weeks ago. You'll see now we have an EK240 res in there as well as a D5 pump from EK as well. Now the reason for that was the original pump and reservoir combo that we'd chosen for the build uh, was actually DOA, the pump didn't function at all. So we ended up swapping that out for something different. I think this has actually turned out a little bit better than the other one would have anyway. It looks really clean and look to be honest with you guys, the finish, the fit and finish quality on the EK products is that little bit higher than the uh, pump and res combo that we had in there previously. So it just looks a little bit more refined and nice. You can see we've gone with EK's HD black fittings pretty much throughout the entire build. Only exception is just the chrome on the top there just to match the overall look and feel of the build. So we've kind of gone with a silver and black theme here and uh, we may be ending up adding some dye to the, uh, to the coolant a little bit later on as well. As I've mentioned before, this is a client build. So it's sort of built to what he kind of had envisaged. He gave me plenty of creative license in the process as well. But uh, he ordered some black, uh, some black dye for the coolant. And uh, yeah, I sort of said to him, I think we're better off leaving it clear just for now and then uh, have, have a look at it, see what you think, because obviously we lose a little bit of the contrast then, we lose the ability to really take full advantage of the RGB inside our reservoir as well. So I've left it clear for now, but we may be ending up uh, adding some dyes a little bit later on to the build. So I'll keep you updated on that as well. I'll get him to send me through some pictures if he does change anything. But uh, look, other than that, everything went together pretty easily. We had a few issues with the fitment of the uh, radiator up the very top. You'll see I actually ended up swapping them out. So I had the thicker radiator there to begin with. But what I found was that there were clearance issues at the back here with the fittings uh, interfering with the motherboard. And in particular, once you mounted the fans on top of that radiator, you could no longer plug in your 12 volt power lines into this particular motherboard. Now it's not necessarily gonna be a problem with all motherboards, uh, but it was definitely an issue with this one. So ended up having to swap the radiators out, gave us a little bit more clearance for the motherboard tray there. And then uh, yeah, it all sort of just fit in perfectly fine from there. So the other issue that we had, or the other difficulty I should say that we had, was just getting these fans mounted in the front here as well. You obviously have to screw through the front of the panel, through the fan, and then into the front of the radiator, and it's a little bit tight there. There's some wiring up in the very top corner of the case here as well for all the buttons on top of the case, and you kind of have to manipulate that out of the way to get the radiator in there. So uh, that was literally the only two things that uh, that were problematic with the build. There was a lot of intricacy down in the bottom section here in the piping. And as you can see, we ended up plumbing out the uh, the drain port out the back of the case. So I just drilled a little hole in the back here. So it turned out really clean and tidy there. Really happy with the result there. You, know, you also would have noticed we added some little LEDs to the feet of the case as well. And that was covered as part of the montage. So we just drilled some little holes into the uh, acrylic pop the 5mm LED in there. So the only real concern that I have with this case is just the amount of space that we have in the back here. Once we add our power supply, uh, all of our cabling as well, there's not a whole lot of room for much else. And there really isn't a whole lot of room for airflow through the case as well. And I actually found that when I blocked off the ports on the top of the case here, I originally wanted to have an ac acrylic sheet just sort of covering this whole top section here, same as what we did with the back. But what I found was that the fans were actually choking a little bit for airflow there. They couldn't push the air through uh, simply because of the amount of stuff that we have in the back of the case now. Now, if you don't have the uh, drive bay populated there, you can take that drive bay out. You do have room for a pump down in the bottom there. And I'm sure a few of you have been wondering why I have the pump here and not in the back of the case or in the bottom of the case. That's the reason why there simply just isn't any more space available in the bottom of this case once we have those drive bays populated. So yeah, it is a little bit tight in here behind the 480 millimeter radiator. And I honestly do question question just how efficiently this radiator is going to be running uh, given the restricted airflow that it has behind it. But other than that, it's an absolutely beautiful case, absolute pleasure to work on. No sharp edges anywhere, which is really rare for a aluminium case. So they've done a really brilliant job of this case. But again, if you have any more specific questions about it, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to answer those questions for you as well. So the only thing left to do now is take you through some of the overclocking and benchmark results. So we ended up getting a pretty healthy 5.1 gigahertz out of the CPU at a relatively non-aggressive overclock. Now remembering that this is a client build and it's something that I'm not gonna be able to babysit 24 seven like I do with my other machines, 
I wanted to keep it relatively tame here. We could push up to 5.2 gigahertz with the 9900K that's installed here, but uh, it was starting to get up around that sort of 1.4 volt mark. And uh, for a client build, I generally don't like to go up above about 1.35 volts. I just like to keep things in the safe zone. Now we had a lot of uh, temperature headroom here. We're only seeing temperatures of around the sort of 75 degree mark under 100% load. So yeah, no issues with temperature whatsoever. And we definitely have some headroom there, but uh, I just don't like running CPUs hotter than, or these particular CPUs any higher than about 1.35 volts for daily use when I'm not there to actually monitor it myself. But yeah, we were able to get 5.2 gigahertz at 1.41 volts. But yeah, 5.1 gigahertz at 1.35 volts there. And we're able to reach five gigahertz on all cores at just 1.29 volts. So not quite as good an overclocking chip as the one that I built in my own gaming PC recently, but still very, very close. And uh, yeah, really happy with the build. So I really do hope that you guys have found this little video series enjoyable. I tried to keep it short and sweet because we've done quite a few PC builds before. I didn't really see the need to go into a massive amount of detail with this one. So if you do have any more questions, let me know in the comments or jump in our Discord community. You can ask me there as well. But uh, yeah, been a really enjoyable case to work on. Highly recommended if you can get your hands on one. They're uh, quite difficult to come by and also not cheap at all. But the money is definitely worth it. Absolutely beautiful build and uh, I'm very happy with the result and I'm sure that the client will be as well. So thank you very much for watching guys. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you are subscribed and hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss the next video. I am gonna be putting together an overclocking guide. We've done a video before talking about the 9900K specifically and uh, the ASUS motherboards, but we're gonna do a quick overclocking guide for the Gigabyte motherboard as well here. So stick around for that one. But uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you again soon. Bye.